Welcome to our lecture online. Here we have two interesting equations. On the right side, we're trying to solve for R1. On the left side, we're trying to solve that one for R. Again, there's different techniques that we could possibly use, but it just makes sense to go ahead and do it in our standard fashion. We have fractions, let's get rid of fractions, and the best thing to do is to multiply both sides by the lowest common denominator of all the fractions, which in this case is going to be the product of R, R1 and R2. So starting on the right side, solving that for R1, we're going to multiply the left side of the equation by the product of all denominators. It is R times R1 times R2. And on the right side, we're going to do the same. We have R1 times R, oop, R without two sub 1, so R times R1 times R2. Okay, so notice when we multiply this times this, the R's cancel out, and I'm left with 1 times R1 times R2. On the right side, we have two fractions. So first, we're going to multiply this times the first fraction right here. Notice that the R1's cancel out, and we're left with 1 times R times R2. And when I multiply this times the second fraction, notice that the R2's will cancel out, and I'm left with Oop, that's not a plus, that's a minus. Can't make that mistake, that's a minus. The R2s cancel out, I'm left with an R times R1. So notice, it almost doesn't matter what variable I was going to solve for, I'm going to do this as a first step to get rid of the fractions. Now that I've gotten rid of the fractions, I take a look and see I'm solving for R1. I have an R1 over here and an R1 over there, so I'm gonna move all the R1s to one side of the equation. Everything else on the other side, R and R2 is already there, so I don't have to move those, but I do have to move that term to the left side. And since I'm crossing the equal sign, the sign will change from a negative to a positive. So I end up with R1 times R2 plus R times R1 equals R times R2. The next step, I need to isolate R1 because I'm solving for R1 by factoring it out of the two terms right here. So this becomes R1 times R2 plus R equals R times R2 on the right side. And finally, I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by the factor of R1. So that means divide by R2 plus R. And I need to do the same to the right side. On the left side, this cancels out. And I'm left with R is equal to R times R2 divided by R2 plus R. And there's our first solution, solving that equation for oop, R1, not R, but R1. Forgot my sub 1. All right. Next, on the left side, I'm trying to solve that for R. I already have R on the left side, but that doesn't really matter, really. I'm going to do exactly the same thing as I did before. I'm going to get rid of fractions by multiplying both sides of the equation by the lowest common denominator, which is the, the product of all the factors, of all the denominators. So we have R, R1, R2. On the right side, we have R, R1, and R2. Now that we've done that, I'm going to multiply this times this. The R's cancel out. I'm left with R1 times R2. On the left side, equals. On the right side, notice when I multiply this times the first term, the R1's cancel out. I'm left with R times R2 minus, when I multiply this times the second term, notice the R2's cancel out, and I'm left with R times R1. Now I look and see what variable I'm solving for. It really didn't matter before until I get to this step. Notice I'm solving for R, and both terms that contain the R are on the right side of the equation. So because of that, I'm simply going to flip the equation around, so I'm not going to change any signs. So then I get R times R2 minus R times R1 on the left side equals R1 times R2 on the right side. Notice by simply flipping the equation, I don't have to change any signs. Now I see that I can factor out an R on the left side, so I end up with R is equal to, oops, not R is equal to, I'm a little ahead of the game here, R times R2 minus R1. So I simply factor out an R from this term and R from that term, 
If I want to check to make sure I did it correctly, I can multiply back in to see if I get back what I started with. R times R2 gives me this. R times the negative R1 gives me that, so I can see that I did it correctly. On the right side, I end up with R1 times R2. Now I'm going to divide both sides by the factor of R, which is R2 minus R1 on the left side. And of course, I must do exactly the same thing on the right side, divide by R2 minus R1. R2 minus R1 cancels on the left side, so I end up with R is equal to R1 times R2 divided by R2 minus R1. And that will then be the result by solving for R on the left side. And that is how it's done.